Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers, can you hear me? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما أما بعد so إن شاء الله what we'll do is uh, we'll do what we've done in previous lessons we'll go through um, the Arabic and then translate it إن شاء الله بإذن الله تعالى أما بعد فهذه مجالس لشهر رمضان المبارك تستوعب كثيرا من أحكام الصيام والقيام والزكاة وما يناسب المقام في هذا الشهر الفاضل رتبتها على مجالس يومية أو ليلية انتخبت كثيرا من خطبها من كتابي قرة العيون المبصرة بتلخيص كتاب التبصرة مع تعديل ما يحتاج إلى تعديله وأكثرت فيها من ذكر الأحكام والأعداب لحاجة الناس إلى ذلك وسميته مجالس شهر, شهر رمضان <coughs> So the Sheikh just says that in the first part of this paragraph the Sheikh mentions that um, that this book, the sittings of Ramadan, uh, or he's 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 written this book, authored this book, and he called it um, sittings in the month of Ramadan, uh, in the blessed month of Ramadan, and he says that it covers many of the rulings with regards to fasting, you know, praying, uh, night prayer, uh, and the likes. Uh, fasting, um, also zakat, uh, obligatory charity, and uh, those uh, topics uh, that are appropriate with regards to this uh, virtuous month. And the Sheikh also says, he says, so he organized this book um, uh, in such a way uh, that um, every day uh, he has a portion some time and uh, and and discussed uh, uh, his uh, uh, and he shared. Uh, the benefits in every sitting, and he's called it uh, Majalis Yomiya, a daily sitting or uh, a nightly sitting. So sitting in the night or, the, or during the day, uh, a portion of the uh, time period in the day. And he says that he's chosen many uh, different uh, types of uh, benefits, and from uh, those uh, benefits are from a book uh, called Quratul uh, Ayun Al Mubsira. So it's a it's an older book um, uh, by a sheikh known as uh, Abi Bakr ibn Muhammad ibn Umar al Malla al Hanafi, who uh, passed away, uh, uh, Rahmallah, who passed away in the year 1270 after the Hijrah. So the sheikh mentions that, and he, then he says that he he took these benefits and also he uh, clarified uh, some of the things from that book. Uh, made some corrections where it was appropriate to do so. Um, and so we have uh, this book in front of us uh, with the Sheikh Salih al uh authored. And then the Sheikh continues and he says, وَقَدْ سَبَكَ أَن تُبِعَ عِدَّةَ مَرَّاتِ ثُمَّ بَدَى لِي أَن تُعَلِّقَ عَلَيْهِ بِصِفَةٍ مُخْتَصَرَ وَتَخْرِيجْ أَحَدِيثِهِ وَإِضَافَةَ مَا رَأَيْتُهُ مُحْتَاجًا إِلَى إضافة وحذف ما رأيته مستغنا عنه وهو يسير لا يخل 
في مقصود الكتاب أسأل الله تعالى أن يجعل عملنا خالصا لله وأن ينفع بها إنه جواد كريم So then the Shaykh just mentions here uh, what he mentioned just slightly earlier, uh, a little bit earlier in the lesson, so far from what we've read. And he says that um, this uh, book was uh, authored or it was printed uh, several times. And then it came upon him that um, that he needed to uh, make it uh, more summarized. Uh, and so he did that. And he also uh, says here that he uh, added uh, further benefits uh, uh, only to the, that which were uh, were needed um, and he removed uh, some things uh, which were already mentioned for example and were not required within the original uh, book so this is um, also an updated version which eventually we have in front of us and then the Sheikh asks Allah Ta'ala uh, that he makes our actions uh, purely and sincerely uh, for Allah alone and that um, that you know we benefit from this uh, and and so he uh, concludes with a dua in his introduction. So inshallah, let's continue. <clears throat> so we'll go to the first sitting. So today, inshallah, we'll cover the first sitting. Al Majalis al Awwal fi Fadli Shahri Ramadan. So it says the first sitting, and it is uh, in uh, the virtues of the Shahr Ramadan. So this is going to be a nice, uh, a general uh, introduction, inshallah, for us. <clears throat> so the Shaykh, he says, المجلس الأول في فضل شهر رمضان الحمد لله الذي أنشأ وبرى وخلق الماء والثرى وعبدع كل شيء وذرى لا يغيب عن بسره صغير النمل في الليل إذا سرى ولا يعزب عن علمه ولا يعزب عن علمه مثقال ذرة في الأرض ولا في السماء لهما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثرى وإن, وإن, تجهر, بال وإن تجهر بالقول فإنه يألم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى خلك آدم فابتلاه ثم اجتباه فتاب عليه وهدى وبعث نوحا فصنع الفلك بأمر الله وجرى ونجى الخليل من النار فصار حرها بردا وسلاما عليه فاعتبروا بما جرى وأتى موسى تسع آيات فما ذكر فرعون ومرعوى وأيد عيسى بآيات تبهر الورى وأنزل الكتاب على محمد فيه البينات والهدى أحمده على نعمه التي لا تزال تترى وأصلي وأسلم على نبي محمد المبعوث في أم القرى صلى الله عليه وعلى, صاح وعلى صاحبه في الغار أبي بكر بلا مرى ولا أمر الملهم في رأيه فهو بنور الله يرى وعلى أثمان زوج, ابت... زوج ابنتيه ما كان حديثا يفترى ولابن عمه علي بحر العلوم وأسد الشرى وعلى بقية آله وأصحابه الذين انتشر فضلهم في الورى وسلم تسليما So there's a long paragraph there inshallah So let's go through uh, that بإذن الله And then um, we'll go through the translation of that <coughs> So the Shaykh, um, he says, all praise is due to Allah, the one who created um, and originated. So the one who created everything and, and, and is the reason for, the, for it being present. Created water and, and the earth, the land. <clears throat> so, or for example, created water and soil. Uh, he originated everything and spread them about. Also, and that the ant that walks in the night, the ant that crawls or walks in the night is not, uh, uh, he, he, it doesn't escape him, his sight, right? And neither does anything escape his knowledge, even if it's the smallest thing in the, not even the smallest thing, escapes his knowledge. 
whether it's uh, on the earth or in the skies in the heavens, nothing escapes his knowledge. And then there's an ayah mentioned here, which inshallah we'll have a read of. One second. So the ayah that we read here. So let's go to the translation inshallah and have a look at that. So this is from Surah Tutaha. Verse 6, 7 and 8. So let's read the translation. To him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth and all that is between them and all that is under the soil. And if you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, speak the invocation aloud, then verily he knows the secret and that which is yet more hidden. Allah, la ilaha illahu, none has the right to be worshipped but he, to him belong the best names. So that's the translation of, of that ayah from what we've uh, read so far. Um, and then the shaykh uh, continues and he mentions, so this is the opening uh, to what we'll be going through. So then the shaykh says uh, that Allah, he created Adam and tried him and tested him. Then he uh, chose him and uh, he forgave him and guided him. And then he uh, sent a Nuh alayhi salam on his mission and um, he created the ark yeah, and the ark was created and they were rescued um, and then uh, he rescued uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course rescued Al-Khalil Ibrahim alayhi salam from, from the fire that he was thrown into by his own people and he made the heat cold and, and protected him so take heed from these lessons of that, what happened in the past and Musa alayhi salam was given um, and Musa alayhi salam mentions here about Musa alayhi salam so let's just have a look at that quickly and it says here and Musa alayhi salam was given nine clear signs but Pharaoh, Fir'aun he still persisted in his arrogance and that which he did and he did not pay heed to those signs and he strengthened Isa with miracles that amazed the creation. And he sent down the book, the Quran, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In it are clear signs and guidance. <clears throat> and then it says, yeah, <clears throat> I thank him for his bounties. I reach us constantly and I send peace and salutations upon the, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was sent uh, to Mecca or the mother of all cities, which is also known as Makkah Mukarrama. Likewise, may the peace and blessings be upon his companion Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, who was with him in the cave, and upon Umar, who had an inspiring opinion that was fortified by his Lord, and also upon Uthman, the husband of the Prophet's two daughters. Indeed, this is not a fabricated story. And I said peace and salutations upon the son of the Prophet, uncle, i.e. the Prophet's cousin Ali, radiallahu anhu, the ocean of knowledge and the brave lion upon the rest of his companions whose virtue, virtue spread throughout the world. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of them. So this is also the dua here. So let's continue. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, إخواني لقد أذلنا شهر شهر كريم وموسم عظيم يؤذم الله فيه الأجر ويجزل المواهب ويفتح أبواب الخير فيه لكل راغب شهر الخيرات والبركات شهر المنح والحبات شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس that's from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 185. Shahru mahfuf bir rahmati wal maghfirati wal itti min al nari awaluhu rahma wa awsatuhu maghfira wa akhiruhu itkum min al nar. So we'll just uh, go through that translation of that. So, <clears throat> it is a month that is surrounded with mercy, forgiveness, and salvation from the hellfire. Its beginning is mercy, 
its middle is forgiveness and its end is salvation from the hellfire. And there are famous prophetic narrations highlighting the virtues of Ramadan and then numerous reports pertaining to the virtues of this month. And then there's a hadith that we'll read, inshallah. So the Quran ayah that we read with the translation of that is the month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. So that's from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 195, which you can have a look at yourselves as well. <clears throat> so let's continue. Ishtaharat bifadlihi al-akhbar wa tawatarat fihi al-athar wa ففي الصحيحين أن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا جاء رمضان فتحت أبواب الجنة وغلقت أبواب النار وصفدت الشياطين وإنما تفتح أبواب الجنة في هذا الشهر بكثرة الأعمال الصالحة وترغيب للعاملين وتغلق أبواب النار بقلة المعاصي من أهل الإيمان وتصفد الشياطين فتغل فلا يخلصون إلى ما يخلصون إليه في غيره. So let's go to the now we're reading. So the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that's mentioned here is when Ramadan arrives, the doors of the heavens are open and the doors of the hellfire are closed, and the devils are shackled and they chained and shackled. So the Shaykh says the doors of paradise will be opened only because of the multiplicity or because of the increase in the righteous deeds that are performed in this blessed month, Ramadan. Likewise, as a means of encouraging the slaves to increase in their good deeds, the doors of the hellfire will be closed because during this month, sins will be so far away from the believers, the devils will be chained so that they will not have the opportunity to do what they used to do outside of the month of Ramadan. So they'll be prevented. <clears throat> and so let's continue. There's another hadith as mentioned as well. Wa rawa al Imam Ahmadu an Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu an an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal utiyat ummati khamsa khisalin fi Ramadana lam tu'tahunna ummatun min al ummami kablaha khulufu famis saim atiyabu wa indallahi min rihi al misk. وَتَسْتَغْفِرُوا لَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ حَتَّى يُغْفِرُوا وَيُزَيِّنُ اللَّهُ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ جَنَّتَهُمْ وَيَقُولُوا يُوشِكُوا عِبَادِي الصَّالِحُونَ أَنْ يُلْقُوا عَنْهُمُ الْمَعُونَةِ وَالْأَذَى وَيَسِيرُوا إِلَيْكَ وَتُصَفَّدُوا فِيهِ مَرَدَةُ الشَّيَاطِينِ فَلَا يَخْلُصُونَ إِلَى مَا كَانُوا يَخْلُصُونَ إِلَيْهِ فِي غَيْرِ وَيُغْفَرُوا لَهُمْ فِي آخِرِ لَيْلَةٍ قِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ آهِيَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ قَالَ لَا وَلَكِنَّ الْعَامِلَ إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّى أَجْرُهُ إِذَا قَدْ عَمَلَهُ So we've just read uh, quite a bit of text there. So let's go through that, inshallah. <clears throat> so the translation of that hadith, uh, this hadith was a... Uh, 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 reported on the authority of uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, anhu. Um, uh, it was in, uh, mentioned in Al Imam Ahmad reported in his Musnad from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah said my ummah has been given five qualities or five characteristics in the month of Ramadan um, that, that have not been given to any other nations before them uh, and this is uh, the khuluf mentions here khuluf and that's um, the the the, the bad breath or so that you get when you're fasting on an empty stomach. And however, even though it may smell bad when we smell or someone else smells it and they're like, oh, you know, it's a bit slightly foul smelling, etc. But to Allah, it is better than the fragrance of musk or perfume or fragrance is better than that to Allah. Second, the angels seek istighfar, so the angels seek forgiveness for the believers until they break their fast. And thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifies his paradise every day and says, My pious slaves are about to throw the burden and the harm off them and turn to you. Thy paradise. Fourthly, the devils will be chained so that they will not have the opportunity to do what they used to do outside of the month of Ramadan. 
And finally, the fifth quality or a characteristic is that the, uh, the sins of the believers, their sins will be forgiven at every last hour of the night, or the, uh, the last hour of the night, or the last day of the night. It is said, so it was said to the Prophet ﷺ then in, in reply to what he mentioned, he says, Oh, Messenger of Allah, do you mean by this the night of Qadr? Right? The night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. And so the Prophet ﷺ replied and he said, No, but every one, every person who works receives the fruit of his labor upon his completion of that work. And that was, uh, um, uh, there's obviously some uh, uh, mentioned here in the footnotes with regards to this hadith um, um, that it's, uh, uh, has, it's a weak narration, very weak. However, in terms of uh, some of the benefits I mentioned here, um, then um, uh, it's worth mentioning. And you can see that in the footnotes for yourself. You can see that in the footnotes. Number two in the footnotes. So um, let's continue. So the Sheikh says, he says, إخواني هذه الخصال الخمس ادخرها الله لكم وخصكم بها من بين سائر الأمم ومن عليكم ليتمم بها عليكم النعم وكم لله عليكم من نعم وفضائل كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله so in that paragraph, <clears throat> the Sheikh mentions that uh, he says, oh, my brothers, he says, my brothers, these five um, characteristics or qualities that have been mentioned here, Allah's, that have been mentioned, um, they've been, they're specific uh, to, uh, they're specific to the Muslim Ummah, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when comparing to other nations that came before us because they didn't have these characteristics specified for them and it's only for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this great blessing that, that, that we have here and and the Sheikh mentions out of amazement that how many of the blessings have we been given in new, in, uh, we can't enumerate them the amount of blessings we've been given and this is just one of the examples of that of those virtues and blessings and then the Sheikh mentions an ayah from Surah to Al Imran, uh, verse 110, that you are uh, you are the best of nations that were brought forth or brought out to the people, best of nations, Umar Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You command with all that which is good, and you uh, um, prevent people from committing evil, for example, and warn against uh, wrongdoing and evil, and you believe in Allah, and you have iman in Allah. Um, and you can refer to the uh, to this ayah as well, verse 110, uh, Ali Imran. You can go there and have a look as well, inshallah. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh mentions, he says, the first quality. So he says, Al Khaslatul Ula, Al Khaslatul Ula, Inna Khulufa Famis Saim, Atiabu Indallahi Min Rihil Misk, Wal Khuluf Bi Bidam Mil Khai, O Fatiha. تغير رائحة الفم عند خلو المعدة من الطعام وهي رائحة مستقرحة عند الناس لكنها عند عند الله أتيب من رائحة المسك لأنها ناشئة عن عبادة الله وطاعته وكل ما نشأ عن عبادته وطاعته فهو محبوب عنده سبحانه يعوض عنه صاحبه ما هو خير وأفضل وأطيب. So the Shaykh says, so the first uh, characteristic or quality that was mentioned in the Hadith, he begins explaining this to us, and the Shaykh uh, um, uh, Muhammad ibn Salih al mentions mentions here. He says, indeed, this khuluf uh, or this smell uh, that comes from the mouth of the uh, the, the the one who's fasting is is purer and more beloved and purer. Um, uh, to Allah than the, than the smell of musk or fragrance in general, a sweet smell a, a fragrant smell and so the Sheikh says that this um, this word khuluf which is uh, that uh, smell that uh, comes from the mouth of the fasting person is due to, obviously is due to uh, 
the person fasting and that his stomach is being empty and it's empty of it's void of any food and it is a smell that is disliked which we've established as well it's a smell that is disliked by people it's just bad like we could just let's say bad breath it's bad breath that comes out that you know and people are kind of like turn away from it it's not a pleasant smell however to allah it is the most pleasant um and more pleasant than musk because it shows that that this that this particular person this one who's fasting he's cutting out and, be, and and carrying out the commands of Allah Fasting during the month of Ramadan Carrying out one of the commands that Allah's commanded the Muslims with He's fasting And he's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So this is therefore beloved To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Allah obviously replaces this Even though it's a bad smell Replaces that which is good And better And more pure Of course The reward so then the shaykh uh, continues and uh, he says ala tarawna ila ash-shahid alladhi qutila fi sabil Allah yuridu an takuna kalimatu Allah hiya al-ulya ya'ti yawm al-qiyamati wa junhuhu yath'ub daman lawnuhu lawn al-dam wa rihuhu rih al-misk then the shaykh gives us a slightly different example just to help us understand um um, what's being meant here and maybe drive some more benefits from what is already mentioned. It says, do you not um, look at the shaheed, the one who, um, the martyr, the one who died in the path of Allah, wanting uh, that the word of Allah be the highest and upheld, like la ilaha illallah be held up above everything else. He went out and fought in the path of Allah for that purpose. For Allah's sake, that on the day of on Yom Al Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, his wounds will be will be flowing with blood. The flowing from them will be blood, and the obviously the 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 uh, the the color of that will be the color of blood, right? And the smell of that will be the smell of musk. So similar kind of thing here, but just to help us uh, contrast and compare and understand further. So we can see there um, uh, that even though you look at like somebody with wounds and you know it could look disgusting and uh, blood's flowing from it and you know sometimes it may not smell you know because of possible infection things like this then you know at the end of the day on the day of judgment this person is going to come like this but it's going to be smelling of musk it's going to be smelling of musk. So the shaykh continues uh, and he says he says. ألا ترون إساس وفي وفي الحج يباهي الله الملائكة بأهل الموقف فيقول سبحانه انظروا إلى عبادي هؤلاء جاءوا جاءوني شؤت غبرة رواه أحمد وابن حباني في صحيحه وإنما كان الشأث محبوبا إلى الله تعالى في هذا الموتن لأن ناشئ عن طاعة الله عز وجل باجتناب محظورات الإحرام وترك الترفع. so um let's have a look at that. إن شاء الله. so just move forward a second. um and what's the sheikh saying there? so it gives us a third example now to contrast with what I mentioned earlier. so for example when the person who makes Hajj so the pilgrim who goes for Hajj and because he's in a state of ihram and it's for a number of days uh, and he's carrying out his um, uh, uh, his acts of worship um, he, you know and he comes to the, uh, and then finally uh, uh, the yawm uh, al-arafa uh, the day of arafa and you know he he's go, he's traveling to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's, he's doing this for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you look at that then the shaykh mentions that also that this person comes and he's in a state of ihram, but also because of that, he's he's scruffy and disheveled because of that. And that to somebody, if we saw somebody disheveled and scruffy, we're like, what's wrong with this person? You wouldn't really see that as pleasing. You, you think, what's going on here? However, to Allah in this situation of the pilgrim being in the state of ihram, he's a hajj, haji, a hajj, then, you know, to Allah, that's beloved to Allah. 
because why because it's because this person this pilgrim is in that state because of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that particular context of course yep and staying away from those things that would uh, would nullify the haram as well and so you can understand what's being said here so then we move on to the second quality and the second quality then the sheikh says he says <clears throat> he says anna al malaikata tastaghfiru lahum hatta yuftiru wal malaikatu ibadun mukramun inda allah ta'ala la ya'suna allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun fa hum jadiruna bi an yastajiba allah du'a'ahum li sa'imin haythu adhina lahum bih wa inma adhina allah ta'ala lahum bil istighfari للصائمين من هذه الأمة تنويها بشأنهم ورفعة لذكرهم وبيانا لفضيلة صومهم. So then the Sheikh says the second quality or characteristics uh, from those five characteristics that were mentioned, and that is that the angels that the angels ask forgiveness for the the believers the ones who are fasting the believers in the month of Ramadan. Until they break their fast. The angels are obviously as we know. The angels are honorable slaves of Allah. Right? Honorable slaves of Allah. Because they do not disobey Allah. Regarding what he has commanded them. with, And they do what they are commanded to do. Therefore they deserve the honor of their supplication. Being accepted by their Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is the one who commanded them with that. So Allah uh, Jalla wala. Asks them to seek forgiveness. For those who fast. From this ummah as a way of honoring them and proving their dignity and the virtue of their fasting. The word istighfar means to seek maghfira or is to seek uh, repentance, which is a con- or forgiveness, which is concealment of the sin in this world and being pardoned from the sin in the hereafter. This is one of the highest demands and ultimate goals. For verily, every son of Adam uh, makes mistakes or is a sinner or makes mistakes and falls into error uh, and they wrong themselves. As a result, they are in constant need of Allah's forgiveness. We all understand that. Alhamdulillah. And the ayah that was mentioned there, it's explained there in the translation. But what Allah said that they don't disobey Allah and they do what Allah commands them to do. Right? And, and we all understand that we know that anyway, that uh, angels only carry out the commands of Allah. They cannot disobey. They don't have that free will like we have. So um, let's continue. So the third characteristic or quality the shaykh continues and he says anna allah ta'ala yuzayyinu kulla yawmin jannatahu wa yaqulu yushiku ibadi asalihun an yulqu anhum al-ma'unata wal-adha wa yasiru ilayk fayuzayyinu ta'ala jannatahu kulla yawmin tahiyyatan li ibadihi asalihin وَتَرْغِيبًا لَهُمْ فِي الْوُسُولِ إِلَيْهَا وَيَقُولُ سُبْحَانُهُ يُوشِكُ إِبَادِ الصَّالِحُونَ أَنْ يُلْقُوا عَنْهُمْ الْمَأُونَةَ وَالْأَذَى يَأْنِي مَأُونَةَ الدُّنْيَا وَتَعْبَهَا وَتَعْبَهَا وَأَذَاهَا وَيُشَمِّرُ إِلَى الْعَمَالِ الصَّالِحَةَ الَّتِي فِيهَا سَعَادَتُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَالْوُسُولُ إِلَى دَارِ السَّلَامِ وَالْكَرَامَةِ so um, the Sheikh mentions that he says so. The third quality or characteristic is that Allah beautifies His paradise um, every day, and and He says, "My righteous slaves will soon throw their burdens and the harm which they are experiencing, and turn to You." So Allah Azza wa Jal beautifies His paradise every day to have it ready for His pious slaves and to urge them upon doing good deeds that will help them acquire that paradise, as He, the glorified, states, "Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." My pious slaves shall soon throw the burden and harm off them. Meaning the burden of this world and life and its hardships. And they will turn towards doing the righteous deeds in which is their happiness in this world and the hereafter. And a means for them reaching the home of peace and dignity. Which is paradise. So then we move on to the fourth quality. And the fourth quality is. That the Sheikh says, Al Khaslatu Rabiatu Anna Maradata Shaitan Shaitin Yusuf Yusuf Fadun 
بالسلاسل والأغلال فلا يصلون إلى ما يريدون من عباد الله الصالحين من الإذلال عن الحق وتثبيت وتثبيت عن الخير وهذا من معونة الله تعالى لهم أن حبس عنهم عدوهم الذي يدعو حزبه ليكونوا من أصحاب السعير ولذلك تجد عند الصالحين من من الرغبة في الخير والعزوف عن الشر في هذا الشهر أكثر من غيره So then the Sheikh mentions in the fourth quality or um, characteristic <coughs> is that the rebellious devils or the shayateen they, 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 they tie down with chains and collars and in that way sort of around their necks and tied down by chains severely so they won't, so they're not able to reach the righteous slaves they're not able to reach the, the slaves of Allah in order to misguide them from the truth or prevent them from doing good deeds and this is from Allah's support uh, of his pious slaves by detaining their enemies Iblis and the Shayateen in general who invite his party to be from the dwellers of the hellfire who invites people obviously the shayateen and the shaitan himself at least is inviting or trying to make people be part of his uh, party which means that whoever ends up being in that uh, circle ends up in in the hellfire and so the shaykh says this is the reason why you find that in this month of ramadan more than uh, more than any other month many pious people increase in their worship and try to stay away from doing evil and a lot of them succeed in that as well and they feel uh, an ease they, they, they feel at ease they, they, more, they, they are easily able to do a lot more good and, 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 and that's felt by them and that's because of this what we've just mentioned here that the Sheikh has mentioned so then we move on to the fifth quality Al-Khasratul Khamisa Anna Allah Ta'ala yaghfiru li ummati Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi akhiri laylatin min hadha shahri إذا قاموا بما ينبغي أن يقوموا به في هذا الشهر المبارك من الصيام والقيام تفصلا منه سبحانه. So the Sheikh is saying there we'll continue less we'll continue to the end of the paragraph and then I'll translate إن شاء الله. ينبغي أن يقوموا به في هذا الشهر المبارك من الصيام والقيام تفضلا منه سبحانه يتوفيه بتوفيق بتوفية بتوفية أجورهم عند انتهاء أعمالهم فإن العامل يوفى أجره عند عند انتهاء عمله وقد تفضل سبحانه على عباده في هذا الأجر من وجوه ثلاثة. So we'll just stop there for a second so we can. Continue and keep a pace of what we're going through. So then, the fifth um, uh, quality here, and it's mentioned that the uh, the Sheikh Mashi says he has legislated for them some righteous deeds that lead to their sins being forgiven and their ranks being raised, <clears throat> and their ranks being raised. Um, had it not been because he, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, has legislated these acts of worship on them, they would not have worshipped Allah with them. That is because. Worship can only be derived from revelation uh, from the revelation of Allah revealed to His messengers. For this reason, Allah denounced those who legislate besides Him, and He even considered that as a form of associating partners with Him, as in shirk. He, the Most High, stated. So, um, we'll just go through this. Uh, so, then the Sheikh does this three different um, uh, perspectives of this. So, the Sheikh says the first one, uh, which uh, we mentioned here, and then the ayah of that is. أم لهم شركاء شرعوا لهم من الدين ما لم يأذن به الله. and so the translation, uh, rough translation of that ayah is, or have they partnered with Allah, false gods, who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not ordained, and had it not been for a decisive word gone forth already, the matter would have been judged between them, and verily for the lawly moon, the polytheists and the wrongdoers, there is a painful torment. Uh, Surah Al-Shura, verse 21. So that's the first aspect of what we're discussing under the uh, subheading of uh, the fifth quality. 
which goes back to the hadith we mentioned earlier in the lesson. So the Sheikh mentions the second perspective. Al Wajhu Thani Anahu Wafakahum Lil Amali Salihi Wakad Taraka Hu Kathirum Min and Nasi Walaula Mauna Tullahi Lahum Watofi Watofiku Hu Maka Mubihi Falilahi Il Fadlu Wal Minna Tu Bidalika Yamununa Aleika and Aslamu Kulla Tamunu Aleya Islamakum Balilahu Yamunu Aleikum and Hadakum Lil Imani Inkuntum Sadikin. That's from Surah Al Hujurat. Verse 17. Um, so let's go through that. And so the second perspective, the second perspective then, the Sheikh mentions, he says he granted them the success to do the righteous deeds, for us to be able to do righteous deeds. For verily many people have deserted these noble acts of worship had it not been for Allah's help and him granting them success, they would not have carried out these righteous deeds. Therefore, to Allah belongs all bounty and favor. Allah Jalla wa'ala states, and we read the Quran ayah and the rough translation of that from Surah Al Hujurat, um, verse 17 is, They regard as favor to you, O Muhammad, وسلم, that they have embraced Islam. Say, Count not your Islam as a favor to me. Nay, but Allah has conferred a favor upon you that He has guided you to the faith if you indeed are truthful. And then we arrive to the uh, final aspect um, or perspective uh, uh, of, of the fifth quality, and that is Al Wajhatu Thalith or Al Wajhu Thalith, and Nahu Tafazala Bil Ajril Kathir, Al Hasana to be Ashri Amthaliha, Ila Sabi Miati Zephim, Ila Adafin Kathira. Al Fadlu Min Allahi Bil Amali was so Wasawabi Alehi. So then we conclude uh, this third and final perspective. And now of, of, of Allah's bounty and his blessings upon us, he multiplies the reward of every good deed. And we know about this, that multiplication of every, every good deed is multiplied by 10, the, then, then to 700 and more than that. So you can see the amount of reward that we can earn. Uh, and, and so the uh, the Sheikh says, therefore, the bounty and favor is from Allah and the reward is from him as well. And thus all praise belongs to Allah alone, Lord of the worlds. So then the Sheikh uh, finishes here now. So we've got a couple of minutes to go, inshallah, and we'll finish this lesson. And so the Sheikh also concludes here and he says, Ikhwani, yablu Ramadan ni'matun kabiratun ala man balagahu wa qama bihaqqihi birrujuhi ila rabbihi من من معصيته إلى طاعته ومن الغفلة أنه إلى ذكره ومن البعد أنه إلى الإنابة إليه. So then the Sheikh says, he says, oh my brothers. So he says to him, he says, oh my brothers. He says that the coming of Ramadan is a blessing. It's a huge, it's a big, it's a huge blessing upon 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 those who or for those who have, you know, uh, are able to, you know, that, that are alive, you know, that Ramadan's come, for example, us here in this gathering today, Ramadan has come, we are in Ramadan, we are here, we're alive, we're here. And, and, and so the Sheikh, he says that it's an opportunity to return to, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, from committing sins to ob uh, obeying him. So from committing sins to obeying him, improving them and and from being heedless of his remembrance and heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remembering him. And, and that distance that we are uh, from Allah, have that, uh, that distance that, that may be between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be, be because of us, then it's an opportunity finally for us to return to him, ask for forgiveness and, you know, improve ourselves. This is an opportunity for improvement um, for everybody, for every Muslim Alhamdulillah So then the Sheikh mentions uh, some poetry here So we'll finish here with some of the poetry And then a closing statement by the Sheikh And he mentions some poetry from uh, A book called Lata'if uh, al-Ma'arif By Ibn Rajab Rahimahullah Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali um, uh, Who was a famous scholar A well-known scholar uh, uh, From uh, previous times 
uh, you can I don't know if there's an English translation of the book, but it's Lataif al Ma'arif ibn Rajab, Libni Rajab al Hambali, Rahimahullah. So, this is some, uh, uh, some of the poetry from there, which is early from today's lesson, so we'll read it. Ya dhal ladhi ma kafahu dhambu fi rajabin, hatta asa rabbahu fi shahri shabani. Laqad adhal laka shahru sawmi ba'dahuma, fala tusayirhu aydan shahr isyani. Watlu al-Qur'an wa sabbih fihi mujtahida, fa innahu shahru tasbihim wa Qur'ani. كم كنت تعرف كم كم كنت تعرف من من صام في سلف من بين أهلي وجير وجيران وإخواني أفناهم الموت واستبقى كبعدهم حيا فما أقرب القاسم الداني. so basically the rough translation of that is that uh, the sheikh mentions here and he says that the, uh, that in terms of his poetry that you know the one who sinned and been sinful in the month of Rajab up until the point that he sinned and he disobeyed his Lord, disobedient in the month of Sha'aban. So Rajab and Sha'aban. And then the 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 uh, the um, the Sheikh uh, uh, the Sheikh um, uh, Ibn Rajab al Hambali. Then he says. Then he mentions. He says in the second line of poetry, he says. And that the month of Ramadan has come to you. It's arrived after those two months that are before it, Rajab and Sha'ban. So don't make this month, the month of Ramadan, also a month of disobedience. Then he says, read the Quran. What will Quran? Read the Quran and act by it. And, and make the sabih within there. And work hard. You know? Work hard, strive in in uh, reading the Quran and uh, doing the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And then he says, "Indeed, the month is a month of Quran and the speech." How many of the pe How many of the people that you know who or before you who fasted in the month of Ramadan from your family and from your neighbors and from your brothers and brethren? Allah. You know, Allah, uh, you know, uh, took their lives away from them. It came, the that time came of leaving this earth. But you remain here after them, alive. You remain here alive after those people before you have gone. So, and then it's, and then there's a bit of an amazement here in terms of that you're still alive. And, and so looking back at everything that's mentioned there, that how close is death or that situation to you? How far or how close is that situation to you? Meaning that, you know, that, you know, take advantage and, you know, take advantage of this opportunity that we've been given, the month of Ramadan, where we can, you know, the month of blessing. And, you know, as we've read in this lesson, what the has mentioned to us, much opportunity is available to all of us and so, uh, snatch up the opportunity uh, before death, because nobody knows when their time is going to come. And as mentioned in these lines of poetry, as we can see the importance of that. So then the Sheikh says he closes uh, he closes with his closing statement. Says Allahumma aikibna min raqdat al ghafla wa wafiqna li tazawdi min al taqwa qabl al nukla. ورزقنا اغتنام الأوقات في ذي المهلة واغفر لنا والوالدين والوالدين والجميع المسلمين وبرحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So then the Sheikh closes off with the dua there, um, you know, and he asks uh, Allah and does a dua for all of us. Um, uh, roughly saying, oh Allah, you know, we ask you to awaken us from the remembrance of negligence and grant us a success to increase in righteousness, good deeds before uh, passing away. And says, oh Allah, sustain us uh, by allowing us to take advantage of our time and times, uh, or take advantage of our times and times of respite, and forgive us and our parents and all the Muslims uh, with your mercy. You are the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our Prophet. 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon his family and his companions in general. So alhamdulillah, we'll conclude there inshallah and uh, Brother Wasim will be continuing next week around the same, uh, sorry, uh, tomorrow um, at the same time, or roughly around the same time inshallah. So we'll continue daily sittings uh, every day up until the end of Ramadan. Bidhin lai ta'ala. Subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.